Well, the campaign against Republicans who do not toe the line on debt has begun. The fiscally conservative organization Club for Growth has a new ad on national cable warning Republicans not to cave in on the debt ceiling. Watch. President Obama and the Democrats want to raise our debt limit even higher, spending even more. But what will Republicans do? Cave in or show some spine? We already have one party committed to bigger government. We don't need another. Stu Rothenberg is the editor of the Rothenberg Political Report and a columnist for Roll Call. Peggy Nance is the CEO of Concerned Women for America, bringing a conservative perspective for us this morning. And Charlie Cook, the editor of the Cook Political Report and an NBC News political analyst. Charlie, I want to start with you. You wrote about the debt ceiling today. And you wrote about the issues of where the two bases are basically somehow dominating this conversation. Uh, and you're wondering, where's the radical middle? Yeah, and this, I think the folks in the middle that are for some kind of a reasonable compromise, they've just checked out. They're just sort of watching, appalled, disgusted, and, and very, very quiet. So now, you know, with Republicans pulling any new revenue off the table, Democrats are going to pull entitlements off the table, and we're going to end up with a very, very small deal. Peggy, let me ask you this. Uh, the conservative movement won, not only won the 2010 election, but you could argue they're winning the national debate. Mm -hmm. Okay, this debate is about cuts, and it's about deficit reduction. A Democratic president is putting entitlements on the table. Why aren't more uh, Republicans saying, welcome, and saying, let's go? Uh, yes, we'll give you some of these tax hikes. Fine, it's the patriotic duty. Everybody should have to contribute to this debt problem. Well, you said it, because not only is he putting entitlements on the table, but he won't take off the table tax hikes. And I'll remind but, but you that... But what's wrong with a give well, and take here? Because, because just seven months ago, Republicans ran on the platform of lower taxes and cutting spending. And they re were rewarded with the gavel in the House of Representatives. If they turn their backs now on what they pledge to the American people, it's political suicide. It's a huge mistake. Stu, I, I, I mean, I, she, she utters what everybody is saying and what apparently John Boehner is uh, learned almost the hard way over the weekend. Well, you know, Chuck, I think Republicans, the view of Republicans, and particularly House Republicans, is that their party has been giving, not just for the last two years or five years or ten, for the last 80 years, that, that they have allowed the Democrats to grow government, to fill us up. And roll them at the end on these deals, at, right? Oh, absolutely. I heard people and, and bring so, up to me the 1990 tax deal. Mm -hmm. Don't let them do exactly. that to me again. Exactly. And I'm like, going, wow. Exactly. So this, you know. is like, this is like the family that's 82. built up all this scar tissue uh, over the years, and they're trying to even the score now. I, one other quick point is you said the president has put the entitlements on the table. I'm not sure any single person can bring about a deal here. John Boehner tried to right. put some stuff on the table, too. So I think Republicans are skeptical about what Democrats. Uh, somehow saying a different name. Uh, we will get through that. Speaking of names, we're going to go to some Iowa polling. Charlie, as you said, it's the first Iowa poll you're actually <laughs> you're actually believing. Well, the second. Love of our friends at uh, the Democratic Register is, a is great, always a good a great one. Poll. But Jan von Lohausen, who was the president's pollster, as good of a pollster as there is on the yeah, Republican Bush's side, pollster, President yeah. Bush's pollster, uh, has a poll that he's done for the Iowa Republican. I want to show it. Yesterday, we showed you Michelle Bachman ahead in the actual field. 25%. She got Romney's 21, Polanyi, uh, and Herman Cain at 9%, Paul 6, Ringridge 4. Well, they did a second ballot test, guys, and then they threw in the non-candidates, Rick Perry and Chris Christie, even Sarah Palin. Well, guess who popped? Not Sarah Palin, not Rick Perry, Chris Christie. Mm -hmm. And it almost all, it looks like, Charlie Cook, comes from Michelle Bachman. Yeah, I was saying it was kind of the shiny vote, the shiny object vote, that whoever's sort of new and different and, and you know, you just sort of add in some exciting name, boy, it'll, a lot of people pop there, how serious it is, whatever. I mean, I don't think that first-term governors can... It's just, very difficult. Yeah, I, mean, I remember that's when they tried. Yeah, and, and the, well, and the thing is, is, is that a first-term senator, if a senator doesn't show up for work, who knows or cares? Right. But Nobody a, notices. Particularly a strong governor state like New Jersey, you can't just up and Penny, leave for two years. Penny, can the conservative movement rally around a guy, Chris Christie, who's not necessarily uh, a, a down and down in the died in the wool social conservative. Well, that's why he works for both independents and social conservatives because actually he is a social conservative. He's, cut, he's cut funding twice for Planned Parenthood. So you could rally around him. You could feel comfortable with what him as I your know, party's nominee. What I know about him so far, I mean, I think the American people are ready for a president who tells them the truth, and I like it that he tells Authent it straight. Authenticity. Yeah. Authenticity. They love his style, and he again is one of those anti-Obama Republicans. He yeah. doesn't look like All the right. president or sound like. Did the you know president. what? Just wait till you actually start running. Yeah. Like, a lot <laughs> different. Ask Marcus Bachman that. Right. Stu Rothenberg, Penny Nance, Charlie Cook. I don't even have time for shameless plugs. I'll just plug you guys next. For this edition, the only rundown. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. 
You know what comes next? Chris Jansen.